Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome everyone to Friday Night Live with uh, with beautiful guests that will be joining us today, inshallah, from across the world. I want to welcome everyone. Ahlan wa sahlan, marhaban bikum. Uh, it's, as you all, brothers and sisters uh, who have been watching and following Miftah, we are so grateful for all, to all of you for all your du'as, all your support, all your words of comfort. They've been they've mean so much to us. They've been so much support to all of us. Jazakumullah khaira. Um, I'd like to Jen, start off. Your, your screen is a little blurry. Is it? Oh, yeah, it's just it's just lagging a little bit. Okay, why don't you talk? I'll I'll just come back in a second. Okay. <clears throat> Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, everyone. Hope everyone is doing well, inshallah. Um, as Sheikh Abdullah reloads his screen, um, we will introduce the program for tonight. Where um, we're blessed to have, um, inshallah, Sheikh Umar Suleiman, um, the, 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 for us, not just a great scholar, a great Sheikh, a legend, um, but also a very close friend of Sheikh Abdullah Mufti Abdul Rahman, who supported us in our family at a very difficult time. Um, he actually joined us for the janazah, so um, he'll also be joining us today. And uh, we also have Muhammad Tariq from Egypt, the Munshid that joined us in the past. He will also be joining us today, inshallah, to recite some poems about the love of the Prophet, uh, not just because it's the month of Rabi'ul Awwal, but especially because of this, of this blessed month, but also because he enjoys singing poems about the Prophet. Um, and um, we have both of them. And then you have Sheikh Abdullah with you as well, who is uh, your host for today. Uh, inshallah, we'll have a beautiful event together. Um, Bijan, it's, uh, it's a little more clear, but I'm yeah, not sure. Up. I, I'm, looking, I'm looking on my phone. I see that you're a little blurry. Okay. I think, bo I think both of us are a little blurry then. But um, uh, let, 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 Bijan, why don't you introduce Muhammad Tariq, inshallah. So let him start and while we'll figure our screens out, inshallah. Okay. Um, okay, Bismillah, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh everyone again. Uh, thank you for joining us and if you can uh, stay on on with us while we go through this uh, foggy screen and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make everything easy and remove the blurry that's in our screen right now. Uh, thank you again everyone for joining and uh, we want to get right into the program. We have the beautiful artist, uh, singer, one of the most talented mashallah in the world and he recites the poems of the prophet so well uh, his name is brother muhammad tariq i'm going to bring him onto the screen ahlan wa sahlan ahlan wa sahlan marhaban bikum ahlan wa sahlan sidi kif halak ya akhbar alhamdulillah wallahi sa'idna kathiran ana sa'id jiddan alhamdulillah alhamdulillah daima ana akun sa'id bi wujudi ma'akum daima yani wa atamanna atamanna an akun daima bi istimrar ma'akum wa um, we are so fortunate that Brother Muhammad Tariq is joining us all the way from Cairo, Egypt. And yes. he was with us a few months ago and he recited so beautiful and his voice, Arwa Sot, Arwa Sot, Fil Alam. I'm going to reward you. Inshallah, as we, he's here now, we inshallah will have him start beautiful Arabic um, poetry and lines. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept, soften our hearts, and make this night a means of our forgiveness and everyone that is watching and listening. Jazakumullah khair. Bismillah. ومعي بهذا شاهد ودليل أما الدليل إذا ذكرت محمدا صار الدروع العاشقين تسيل كل القلوب إلى الحبيب تميل ومعي بهذا شاهد ودليل أما 
ما الدليل إذا ذكرت محمدا صارت دموع العاشقين تسيل يا سيد الكونين يا علم الهدى هذا المتيم في حماك نزيل لو صادفتني من لدنك عناية آل أزور طيبة والنخيل جميل يا سيد الكونين يا علم الهدى هذا المتيم في حماك نزيد لو صادفتني من لدنك عناية لأزور طيبة والنخيل جميل كل القلوب إلى الحبيب تميل ومعي بهذا شاهد ودليل أما الدليل إذا ذكرت محمدا صارت دموع العاشقين تسيل صلى الله عليه وسلم ما شاء الله يا حبيبي ما شاء الله That was beautiful, Bijan. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, Bijan, am I looking okay now? Is that better uh, anymore? You look fine. Do I look all right? Okay. You look okay too. Uh, okay. Uh, Brother Muhammad, um, no. I just wanted to Bijan, let the crowd know that um, the um, Bijan, you're still a little blurry. So, so. Um, just want to let the crowd know and the audience know that Alhamdulillah Brother Muhammad well, Initially, uh, he was brought on a few months ago by the request of my younger brother um, Shaykh Abdul Rahim Rahimahullah. I was telling Brother Muhammad right before the program that he one day came to me and said uh, You know, Bajan, you know, can you call uh, Muhammad Tariq? And I said, you know, I, I, I know him, but I've not really um, you know, listen to him much. He's like, no, no, he's he's, he's amazing, and he sings this um, nasheed on on the hamd of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, kullu al Um And I said, okay, you know what? I'll start reaching out. And alhamdulillah got in touch with him, and his and his um, and he was able to join us the first time. And my brother was extremely, extremely um, happy. He was yafrah jidda. Uh, he was watching from upstairs, and he was so happy with my mother. Um, and then. Um, the day before his shahada, on Sunday night, um, he was listening to this nasheed kullu al over and over and over again. You know, alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. And now, inshallah, he's listening to um, things far more melodious, inshallah, in the voices of Jannah with those that are with him. Um, and, and, and inshallah, I'm sure he's, uh, you'll still enjoy your nasheed still, inshallah, and your poetry. May Allah bless you for your, for your voice and for your, for your poems. Mufti uh, Mufti Abdul Hab, uh, uh, Sheikh Abdul Rahim Rahmatullahi Ali loved loved uh, Muhammad Tariq's poems. Whenever I traveled with him, he would always play Kullul Qulub, like he said, all the time, all the time. Yeah, I أدعو له بالرحمة والمغفرة إن شاء الله ونتقابل في جنات في جنات العليين بإذن الله تعالى ما هو بإذن الله تعالى. آمين آمين. بسم الله. We'll have you sing more. بسم الله. تفضل. بسم الله. إن شاء الله. مش بنيتني يلا. كم شو the next one إن شاء الله؟ جزاك الله خير. سوف ننشد الميدلي في حب النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم. 
ما شاء الله ما شاء الله صلوا على الحبيب صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه الصلاة والسلام طارق brother and everyone that's listening you know our, my memories with my brother like Mufti Abdullah was saying or so many so many car rides كنا في السفر دائما يستمعوا هذا الأناشيد دائما منك وسفرنا ما بعد في هذا الزمان ونسمع هذه الأنا هؤلاء الأناشيد والله الحمد لله الحمد لله فضلنا. وعندنا you know we have we have these memories with uh, Sheikh Abdul Rahim uh, that every time we would travel we would listen to this beautiful nasheed on Salawat on Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam my brother loved uh, Salawat on Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and uh, nothing brings you know uh, peace like uh, into the heart than sending Salawat on Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and especially in times of difficulty in you know in pain. We not only have the life of the Prophet ﷺ to give us comfort, but we also all have his name. Muhammad ﷺ brings so much comfort to our hearts. And Brother Muhammad uh, Tariq is bringing so much joy and comfort to the hearts of many people. Um, so I don't want to, you know, your voice is far more melodious and attractive than my voice. So I don't want to be the one speaking. And we need Mustama Amin Sawtika Al Jamil Al Raya, inshallah. Bismillah. What else do you have? ما عندك ان شاء الله انا انا اريد ان انشد انشوده في يعني تكون تعزيه لحبيبي اخي عبد الرحيم وان شاء الله تكون يعني نتذكر نتذكر عبد الرحيم بهذه الانشوده وندعو الله سبحانه وتعالى ان ان يغفر له ذنوبه يا رب العالمين so brother Tariq, brother Muhammad Tariq is um, I asked him what's next and he said that he wants to uh, sing a poem in condolence uh, to our family uh, after the demise of our beautiful beloved brother Abdul Rahim Alayhi, Sheikh Abdul Rahim. So he's going to recite something in Arabic and I just hope it doesn't make me cry. So I'm going to leave the screen inshallah. <clears throat> وهو غطائي حول الرمال تلفني 
بل من ورائي واللحد يحكي ظلمة فيها ابتلائي فيها ابتلائي فرش التراب يضرني وهو غطائي حول الرمال تلفني بل من ورائي واللحن يحكي ظلمة فيها ابتلائي والنور خاف كتابه أنسي لقائي آه أنسي لقائي آه لقائي واللحذ يحكي ظلمة فيها ابتلائي آه فيها ابتلائي آه ابتلائي والأهل أين حنانهم باعوا وفائي والصحب أين جمعهم تركوا إخائي والمال أين هناؤه صار ورائي صار ورائي فرش التراب يضرني وهو غطائي حول الرمال تلفني بل من ورائي واللحد يحكي ظلمة فيها ابتلائي فيها ابتلائي رحمه الله رحمة واسعة أدعو الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يرحم فقيدنا الشيخ عبد الرحيم وأنا عرفت اليوم بأنه توفى وعرفت بهذا الخبر المحزن جدا وحزنت كثيرا جدا جدا والله وأتمنى أتمنى من الله سبحانه وتعالى أن نتقابل كما هو يحبني في الله ويحب صوتي أتمنى من الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يجمعني وإياه في الجنة بإذن الله تعالى ومع النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم هو السبب الذي جعلنا نجتمع على على حبه Jazakum Allah khair. Um, brother uh, Muhammad Talik just recited a poem that uh, Afasi recited um, originally on the grave. And uh, it's about the darkness of the grave and the family leaving the deceased alone at the grave. It's so it's so powerful that I, 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 I've never, you know, poured dirt over someone that I love so much before in my life. You know, our parents are alive. I know parents who have lost their loved ones. Umar will be joining us today. And uh, Allah yarham ummah. May Allah have mercy on his mother and grant her the highest levels. He he knows the pain of, you know, losing a mother. And there's so many people who are watching tonight who have lost loved ones and relatives. It's unbelievable. You know, when we go to the graveyard, we're just so used to just, you know, tabarru can grab some dirt and pour it over the, over the grave. It's totally different when you have your brother, and not just a brother, your baby brother. Someone that I, I taught Quran to, and someone that I watched him grow. I taught him everything except for the board stuff, skateboard, snowboard, you know, all those, those um, I don't know what to call them, those, uh, the white man sport, you know. He, he, did, he used to do that himself. Um, uh, he was the Tony Hawk of our family. He would do all, but everything else from from Quran, Arabic. He was my student. He was my baby, and I can't imagine my mother, my father, and uh, putting the dirt there, laying it down on for his body. And uh, even now, Mufti Dohab, when he goes to the grave, and our family goes to the grave, 
it just, you know, it tears us apart. But we know that he's in a better place, inshallah. And we ask Allah to have mercy on all those who have passed and left us and united in Jannah for those. So this poem is about that. It's about how the family, wealth, everything stays back. And we are buried alone in, in the grave. We ask Allah to give us the actions where the grave becomes a, a means of our um, protection from the, Allah, from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, do you have anything else? هل عندك هل بقي شيء عندك? هذا يكفي حتى لا يمل الناس مني ولا يكونون بورينج يعني إن شاء الله لا نحن لا نمل أبدا ما حدثنا عندنا استطاع أن نسمع في طول الليل إن شاء الله الله يكرمك يا رب عزك الله ممكن نختم بأنشودة لو كان بيننا الحبيب صلى الله عليه وسلم نعم نعم والله بسم الله بسم الله نحن منتظر لو كان بيننا الحبيب لدنا القاصي والقريب من طيبة قبل المغيب طالبا قرب الحبيب بقربه النفس تطيب وتدعو الله فيجيب أنوار طه لا تغيب بلغنا لقاه يا مجيب لو كان بيننا الحبيب لدنا القاصي والقريب من طيبة قبل المغيب طالبا قرب الحبيب بقربه النفس تطيب وتدعو الله فيجيب أنوار طه لا تغيب بلغنا لقاه يا مجيب هداك الكون الرحيم رحمة الهادي القريب حديثك أنه العبيب جوارك الغصن الرطيب فدتك روحي يا حبيب محمد مكرم الغريب بقربك الروح تطيب يا رحمة للعالمين يا حبيبي يا محمد يا طبيبي يا محمد أنت ذو الفضل المؤيد جل من صلى عليك يا حبيبي يا محمد يا طبيبي يا محمد أنت ذو الفضل المؤيد جل من صلى عليك صلى الله عليه وسلم جزاكم الله خير والله كلام شعر رائع جدا ما شاء الله جزاكم الله خير اللهم اجمعنا مع حبيبه صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم اللهم اسقنا من حوض الشريف يا رب العالمين لا تحرمنا من شفاعته يا رب العالمين يا رب العالمين وي ونت ثينك ابو محمد طارق سو ماتش يور فويس اي تايم اي هير يعني يذكرني باخي الصغير 
<laughs> it reminds me of my brother. And now I love you more. You know, I love your voice, but now I have another reason to listen to you. And inshallah, you know, we نحن ننتظر لقاء الجنة inshallah ما بعد inshallah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, we will inshallah ندعوك مر مرارا inshallah في في المستقبل. Inshallah بإذن الله تعالى. على محمد زكى الله خير بدر محمد. الله يبارك inshallah. Thank you so much. Allahumma inna rabbana. Inshallah. Jazakumullah khair. Muftab Dohab, I I see that you are you have moist eyes. Watery eyes, you're puffed up, and um, you know when you're not. When if you if, you, if, if you're gonna cry, I'm gonna take you off the screen. No, I'm not on the screen today, but you know I'm not on, man. It's just you, you on know, the picture. It's you, you and, know, and I, I don't think I want to do this without you. So I'm gonna move you and bring you back. And wipe your eyes, okay? Um, I want to bring my brother Muftah Dohab on, but I'm gonna bring Sheikh Omar on first. He's our he's our guest, and uh, and then inshallah I'm gonna bring Muftah Dohab whether he likes it or not. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Shaykh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you doing? Alhamdulillah. Wonderful to see you. Alhamdulillah. I mean. I, 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 we're so indebted to you, Shaykh, that um, you flew all the way down from Dallas uh, for the, the funeral. You came to the body where we washed the body of my beloved brother, and you were there to comfort my mom. And then uh, my brothers, uh, Muftib Rahman, I mean, uh, he, you hugged him so tight, and you gave him so much comfort. And Sheikh Abdul Wahab and Sheikh Abdul Aziz that day, may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala continue to give you the reward of this aza and comfort throughout your life, Umar. And uh, I just, I just wish people could see the person you are behind the screen. Amazing. Amazing. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala reward you. Then you came and. Uh, he spoke for my brother at the at the funeral, at the janaza, and then you came to the graveyard. You you made dua for him, and you didn't want to leave. And you keep on asking us, "Can I come back? Can I come back?" And we, Mufti Rahman keeps on telling you to stay back in Dallas. You're doing so much work there. But um, you know, you came you came you came at the most difficult time of our life. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be with you at every step of your life, for your family, everything you've done for the world, it's sufficient. But um, this, what you did was unbelievable. You came down and so many people came down. May Allah reward them. Alhamdulillah. That was an honor. You guys, um, you know, your, your family, um, <clears throat> yeah, you, you five are a special bunch. So I, I got to spend the least time with um, Sheikh Abdul Rahim, Rahim Allah Ta'ala. I was even looking through the uh, pictures. He's always in the background, <laughs> always in khidma. Um, you know, subhanAllah. So he's always, even in the pictures that we have, right, always in the corner, picking something up, helping someone out. But um, uh, your family is a special family. Whoever does not thank the people does not thank Allah. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward um, all, all of you uh, for what you give to us, the collective uh, of what you give to us. Uh, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward your parents, make things easy for them um, in these difficult moments. And uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for all of you. And may Allah, you know, I know when you when you guys go to the graveyard and say, Antum as wa inna insha'Allah bikum lahiqoon. Uh, following uh, your your youngest one went first, but bin uh, Ta'ala, he beat you to it. But he's uh, inshallah Ta'ala waiting for waiting for you guys, waiting waiting for for all of us inshallah with, with the Prophet slice of them. Arwah al Mu'minin. So we ask Allah Subhanahu Ta'ala to grant us a good ending and to join us with with them with those special mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. uh, rather that you know uh, that janaza was a. Uh, was was such a testimony. It was such a testimony. So may Allah Azza wa Jalla reward you, and um, you know, for reward all of you, and may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala allow our testimony to be of Him, to be to, for Him to even be better and more beloved to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala than He was to those that He left behind. May Allah Azza wa Jalla allow that testimony to be insufficient in describing His station with Allah Azza wa Jalla. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala continue to comfort your hearts. 
and uh, just be comforted with all the people that are making dua for him, that are inspired by him. Um, and it's poetry, it's tragic poetry. You know, really it's tragic poetry, subhanAllah. The video of him with his own poem. Uh, you know, the, the Nasheed Farshi Turab, um, the singer is actually Mashari Al-Arada and, and subhanAllah, he died in a car accident, rahimahullah, like two years ago. So subhanAllah, like that, that, that Nasheed, he was young. Um, I know he was just a, you know, he was he was a little older than me. I mean, he was a young guy, rahimahullah ta'ala. And I remember when he passed away, just being shocked. This is one of my favorite nasheeds. And it says, tragic poetry. Like, that nasheed is just tragic poetry. Wow. That nasheed, you know, subhanAllah, who, who how, would he have thought as he was singing that nasheed that he was talking about himself, oh, right? Nice. Like, he would die just a few years later um, in his 30s. Uh, in a car accident, rahimahullah ta'ala. Wow. And um, yeah, so that nasheed and Hal uh, Turana Naltaqi by Amin al Qutb, rahimahullah. Those two nasheeds have, have, uh, have, have, have um, yeah, I've, I've listened to them quite a bit, subhanAllah. And I, I think they're good for the heart. It's good for people too. Of course, there's nothing better for the heart than the Quran. And some of these pure words, beautiful words, including the beautiful poem that was recited by. Sheikh Abdul Rahim Rahimullah Ta'ala. Wa kana Allahu wa kana bil mu'minin rahima. These names are not by accident, and Ar Rahim is the especially, exclusively merciful. Kana bil mu'minin rahima. Rahmanun fi dunya rahimun fi akhira. So we ask Allah Azza wa Jalla that Abdul Rahim is receiving that special rahmah from Ar Rahim. He was named Abdul Rahim, and when, he, when it was written in the womb who he was and the day he would be born, the day he would die, he was Abdul Rahim. So Ar Rahim received him, received his soul back from this world and bid the Ta'ala. We, we pray that Allah Azza wa Jal received him in the most beautiful of ways. I mean, to, to all of you, by the way. Uh, and I think the whole community owes you guys a lot. Your whole family is so selfless. You were even selfless at the Janazah. <laughs> this, you, you're such a family of khidmah. Uh, uh, you know, Mufti Abdurrahman was like checking on me whether I ate or not. And you guys had just buried your brother. So may Allah uh, reward you all. And that's a sign of your good parents too. So we tell auntie how special of a mom she is. I have never seen, uh, you know, you, you you mentioned her as a as a sahabiyah that walks on this earth. Uh, she she She's, what a woman your mother is. What a woman your mother is. Five hafad of Qur'an five ulama and five people that serve the community. What a woman your mother is. I've never seen a woman like that. May Allah bless her and comfort her. So we are the shuhada of Allah in this world uh, for you guys uh, and for Abdul Rahim. And we, 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 his, his smile was, was so beautiful. And uh, that smile was a smile of service. That wasn't a forced smile. <laughs> that was a, that, that's a beautiful smile that he had. And that was a smile of service. That was a smile of khidmah. Alhamdulillah. Shaykh Umar, I'm, I'm trying to bring um, um, I'm trying to bring Mufti Abdul Wahab on for a few minutes or at least a few seconds, and if you could um, um, if you don't mind. No. I'm good. I'm good. Um, I'm just I'm just enjoying um um, Sheikh Salam alaikum Um, I apologize for you know being a poor sport and not being a good host today. Um, you know, we, we've been hosting people for quite a bit on these different platforms and programs, and um, it used to always it's, it's it's very enjoyable, it's very honoring for us, Sheikh. I don't think um, we, we have a more honorable host than yourself because not you know not not for any other reason that you don't know already, but for that what you did for our family just just means so much to us. But you know, I don't want to I don't want to make the whole crowd cry and be me crying the entire time. So uh, that's why I told Sheikh Abdullah you take care of it, but. Um, May Allah reward you, Sheikh. Um, you know, for those that for those that know Sheikh Umar in front of the screen, um, you know, that's that's good enough. But um, you know, those phone calls, those the, the text messages, the, the, that's that's just it, it, it allows us to wake up in the morning and go to work, Sheikh. Um, so JazakAllah khair for that. Uh, when you call me and said to me that, you know, make sure you go to work and teach and, you know, play basketball. Sheikh, I haven't missed work since. Alhamdulillah, I've been teaching. I just haven't been able to do lives because <laughs> lives are a little bit more challenging for us, unfortunately. But JazakAllah khair, Sheikh, for your words. Um, you know, I think in the live, Mufti Duhab, 
the whole world sees him cry. And when he talks to him in person in front of his students, he gets his students see him cry, and then he's okay with it. And uh, Mufti Doha, yeah, and I said this to you at the Janazah, man, you know, he was the closest to you, and he's in a better place. He's 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 with Malaika. I know his, his absence can never be filled by me or anyone. You know, none of us were like a brother like he was to you. That's without a doubt. But you, you know, the world is counting on you. You you have you're a sheikh, you're a teacher, you're a husband, you're running the institute. You can't keep on running it like this, man. You've got to wipe it off. And the world is, you know, there's so many other crying people in the world that need your comfort. How many more days can we see people's comfort? You know, there's so many crying people out there that need your comfort now. That need my need us to stand up to give them support. You know, and of course, you know, it's just a few days, a few days, a few weeks, and then we're going to be with him in Jannah. Sure. You know? I mean, Bajan, no, we, we have we, we have we have awesome brothers, man. Bajan, we couldn't ask for a better older brother than yourself and Musib Rahman. Rahman. Don't make me emotional. Don't make me emotional. Aziz, so you guys are awesome, mashallah. And Sheikh Umar is an older brother to all of all of us. And um, you know, may Allah bless him and uh, yourself and Sheikh Abdul Mufti Rahman. Uh, Sheikh, let me ask you a question, Sheikh. Um, how do you balance this this concept of the Prophet ﷺ being daim mutabassum, but also mutawasul al ahzan? Like, how, how how did that work? You know, like how can you always be some form of you have some form of sadness, but always be smiling? Uh, you know, can, can you just shed some light on that because I think that would really help us. Uh, you guys, you guys messed me up, man. <laughs> uh. Sheikh uh, Muhammad al-Shanawi Abu Abad, I remember when he first shared uh, something he read from Imam Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala. Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah was talking about Qudayl uh, ibn Ayyad rahimahullah and the loss of his uh, son when his son died. And he was, uh, you know, they, they said killed by the Qur'an in the sense that his son passed away, passed away. In Allah, uh, praying behind Qudayl, uh, behind his father. And Fudayl, uh, rahimahullah ta'ala, was very hurt by, you know, the fact that his son passed away when, when he was leading the salah. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, at the janazah, he was he was smiling. Everyone knew how much he loved his son. He was smiling. And, um, you know, someone asked him about why he had such a big smile on his face. And, and he, he, he basically, you know, to paraphrase... Um, you know, he said he wanted to show, he wanted to suppress his emotion. He wanted to show his lila, his please, his being pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, cut back to the scene of the Prophet sallam, when his kids die. We see a Prophet sallam, who's crying. Um, Rasulullah sallam, sitting in the grave to receive the, the bodies of his brothers. One by one, six children. And, um, you know, the way that Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, Shaykh Islam described that, again, paraphrasing, he said that, uh, you know, because if you see the two exteriors, uh, which one is more pleased with the decree of Allah Azza And you might think, you know, just on, on, at face value that it was Fulayl, not the Prophet Sallallahu or Fulayl was more pleased. If you see two people, one smiling and one crying, you might think that. But the way that Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah ta'ala, uh, brought it back together was to say that the Prophet ﷺ was able to combine two emotions in his heart. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was the rida with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's decree and the mercy that he had for his child. And that was the most perfect response and that the Prophet ﷺ never in the supreme mercy and grief that he had over his love for his children did not contradict his being pleased with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Fulayl rahimahullah ta'ala basically could not choose between the two emotions. So he chose the more uh, the, 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 the more pleasing emotion to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that moment because uh, he was not able to combine the way the Prophet Sallallahu was able to combine. He was afraid that if he if he gave weight to the mercy and in his heart for his son, and the love that he had for his son, that it would overtake him and he might depart from being pleased with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
So the Prophet ﷺ is perfection in every way, and his perfection was that he was always smiling, alayhi salatu wasalam, even in pain. But he cried, he loved his children, he loved his grandchildren, he suffered a lot, alayhi salatu wasalam. He suffered a lot. Can you imagine, you know, subhanAllah, empaths suffer in this world because they give so much of themselves to their loved ones. And so when their loved ones hurt, and even worse, when their loved ones die, a part of them dies. Uh, who's a greater empath than the Prophet Sallallahu Right? Uh, if that's how he is with the believers, and if he felt sadness over his enemies, as describing himself standing in front of a fire, trying to catch people as they're jumping into the fire, holding on to their waist belts, and they're fleeing from his hands. Imagine what it was like for the Prophet ﷺ to bury Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha. I can't imagine. I cannot imagine uh, burying his children one by one by one, right? I just cannot imagine what he felt, alayhi salatu wasalam. But the thing is that the Prophet ﷺ was perfection, so his emotions were perfect. Or the way he channeled his emotions were perfect. So the mercy he had in his heart, <clears throat> he combined with complete pleasure in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Pleasure with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's something we should strive for. So we should not feel bad when we're overcome by emotion and and, and love and um, you know and, and the pain that we feel when we lose our uh, loved ones. So long as we don't descend into la naqulu illa ma yurdillah. So as long as we're saying alhamdulillah, as long as we're showing pleasure with Allah's decree, uh, it's rahmah that Allah put in our hearts that. Um, we would be afraid if we started to lose that, right? So, um, yeah, that's our messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to see his smile in person and to allow us to be gathered with him, alayhi salatu wasalam. I mean, I mean, Sheikh Omar, thank you so much. You know, the thing is, Muftad al-Hab, the first day he went back to school to teach at the at MII, um, he comes back and um, it was too hard for him. He just, I had to hug him, give him a tight hug. And, uh, and he's because he was a brother and then he was a co-worker right he was his employee uh, and, and they worked together they were brothers so every room every inch he died half a mile away from home the streets the school the students just reflection reflecting uh, and every time you go to that pain with the doha that we go through that pain we make dua Allah accepts inshallah and we may walk with someone, that's out, someone else that's going to be in pain. So Allah removes their pain also. You know? Yeah, Imagine the people in Medina walking around after the, the death of the Prophet. Like the saying of Anas anhu, that when the Prophet came to Medina, everything lit up. And then the day he died, it all kind of darkened. You know, the, it went dark. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It'll put every other pain in, in perspective. But Jen, uh, isn't that, yeah, isn't that what Abu Ji said when um, when he called us? He said that um, there's no day that's ever going to be darker than the day that the Prophet Sallallahu was taken from this world. So don't think that this day is dark. The day that's dark, the, the, the darkest day has already passed. This is light compared to that. Um, and he reminded us about that as well. Sheikh Omar was speaking about. Sorry to cut you off, Sheikh. No, uh, and that, that's why Bilal radiallahu anhu couldn't be in Medina anymore, right? غداً ألقى الأحباء محمداً وصحبة غداً ألقى الأحباء محمداً وصحبة and he was passing away رضي الله تعالى عنه and you know his wife said واحد is not close how sad I am and he's dying in a sham due to a pandemic a plague عمواس uh, according to some of the narrations and he's saying just say وافرحة what a great day غداً ألقى الأحباء محمداً وصحبة أو محمداً وحزبة tomorrow I get to meet the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and his companions again we cling on to that you know, and that's mm-hmm. something that we have. You know, the mu'min has, you know, when the Prophet Prophet says, عَجَبًا لِأَمْرِ الْمُؤْمِنِ How amazing is the affair of the believer. Um, and the Prophet Prophet describes the way that the believer responds to both hardship and ease. And he responds with hamd and shukur when something good happens. And he responds with hamd and sabr when something bad happens. And that's something that the Prophet Prophet said only the mu'min has. There's a closure about death, right? Anything else in life um, to awad, right? Somehow, 
it can be returned to you. Your health can be returned or there's some, there can be a reduction, but death is so final, right? As, as regards to this dunya, right? There's such, there, there, there's um, such a finality to it. So what is, you know, what does that hadith look like with specific tragedies? How does the mu'min respond to health, a loss of health? How does the mu'min respond to a loss of wealth? How does the mu'min respond to the loss of a loved one and still find joy, still find certainty? Um, and when it comes to the believer, when they lose the loved one, uh, it is more than anything else that we know that this world is just a bump in the journey. It's not, it's not us. We're not, we're not here for this world. This is a pit stop. You know, imagine like you're driving together on a highway, taking a road trip and you got to a rest area and you were in two separate cars and your brother took off a few minutes before you, but you're still trying to go to the same destination. You're still looking to arrive at the same destination. It's just a pit stop, right? You're just stopping at a rest area. This is what this dunya is. What is this dunya in regards to the entirety of our existence? It's a rest area. You come, you take a quick break, and then everyone gets back in their vehicle and moves on to the next one. We're all in different vehicles. The body is a vehicle. We're all in different vehicles. But the souls ultimately arrive at one of two destinations. And Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, rahimahullah ta'ala, what was the verse that if he read it at night, he would... Uh, it was like a, a bird that would be splashed with water. His wife would make dua that he doesn't read it at night. Right. A group in Jannah and a group in Hellfire. His wife would say, I would hope he would not read that first because it would almost be there. So if we are of the people of that destination of Al-Jannah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all amongst them. Allahumma ameen. And this was just a rest area. And we ask Allah to protect us from the other destination. I mean, I mean, Zakhla Khir Sheikh. Um, but Jen, I think you know the topic that we had today was ensuring a good ending. How to ensure a good ending? And um, uh, as much as I don't think there's anything else in this world that I love speaking about more than my younger brother, Rahimahullah, uh, at any chance that I can get, I think it's important for uh, for the crowd to also get some benefit in regards to um, what are some tips of how we can, you know, the Khair al Khatima, you know, how to have a good ending. Alhamdulillah, Allah blessed him with. An ending that I, I, you know, I wish it was me. Um, I wish I served my mother like him and taught like him. But how, how can people like us that are still alive try our best to give ourselves the best chance? I mean, you don't go into um, the playoffs knowing that you're going to win. You go in the playoffs uh, hoping that you have the best chance to win. You know, so because you practice and you, you know, spend nights in the gym. How do we give ourselves the best chance, Sheikh? Um, and Vision, of course, you should. You can answer. You should answer too. After. No, I think we have Sheikh Omar. We'll give we'll, both of us will step off. And no, no, no. You guys, halas, you must. I can't give a lecture now. <laughs> you guys messed me up, man. There's no lecture. It's just let's just talk, inshallah. Uh, reflect together. Either arad Allahu abdin khaira, sta'amala. There's a hadith in Sunnah Tirmidhi that if Allah wants good, it's narrated by Anas ibn Malik radiAllahu ta'ala anhu. <clears throat> And it's uh, all of the ruwat of the hadith are Hanabi up to Imam Ahmed rahimahullah ta'ala. Wow. So, it's a, so it's a little uh, madhab competition here. But it's a beautiful hadith uh, from Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants good for a servant, he isti'amala. And, and you know, the, the, the literal translation of that hadith is, to, is a difficult one because, you know, he uses him or he puts him in amal, he puts him to action. Puts him to use. So they ask the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi and how how does he do that? Kaif, kaif ista, yani how how does he do that? And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentions that uh, he opens the door for a good deed right before his death. Allah Akbar. Yani it is it is such <laughs> beautiful beautiful hadith. Yani you uh, afiqh right, and that's the thing you afiqh. Any amal salih that you do is tawfiq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is Allah azza wa jal blessing you with that? Allah azza wa jal just guides him to a good deed right before his death. SubhanAllah. So it's like it's as if Allah azza wa jal like delays that person just another hour to place him to do a good deed and then takes him to that. So that the person dies on that good deed. And it could, you know, and, and that's that's just, you know, when you think about, again, what a perfect morning. <laughs> Teach Quran, go pick up medicine for your mom. 
وقضى ربك ألا تعبدوا إلا إياه وبالوالدين إحسانا uh, Teaching the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala خيركم من تعلم القرآن وعلم The best of you are those who learn the Quran and teach it and then Jannah is at the feet of your mother mm-hmm. and so go you know to, 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 to die in the service of your mother it's such an ordinary deed but what a deed to die on and the way that, that, that there's two things here uh, here أراد الله بعبده خيرا Allah wanted good for that person. So Allah gave him tawfiq. Now, here's the thing. You don't do any amal salih. None of us do any amal salih, any good deed, except that it's tawfiq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Including the ability to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hamd is tawfiq. Is, you know, the fact that Allah allows you to praise him is something that he should be praised for because that is tawfiq. That's being allowed to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is guiding you to say hamd, uh, you know, that's the, the, what Umar radiallahu anhu said about dua, right? That uh, I don't, I just, I don't think about the answer to the dua. I just think about, I don't have hem for the ijab. I don't have any concern for the answer. I just think about the ability to do so because if Allah gave you tawfiq to make dua, if Allah gave you success, the ability to make dua, that means Allah wants to give you something. SubhanAllah, that's so, beautiful. Tawfiq ila dua, tawfiq ila al-amal al-salih is in and of itself something to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for. And so with this hadith, that Allah guides you to a good deed right before he takes you away. There are two things here. Number one, your regularity upon that good. Your sincere regularity upon that good. It would be delusion to wish for a good death if you're not living a good life. You can't have a good ending and you know and not and not care about a good life you know so it, it would just be delusion why would i think that i'm gonna die on reading quran if i barely touch it except in ramadan why would i think i'm gonna die in salah if i rush through my five prayers express salah and i don't pray any nafila why would i think i'm gonna die in dhikr if i don't say la ilaha illallah as a regular weird as the Prophet said, keep your tongue moist with la ilaha illallah. Why would I think I'm going to die saying la ilaha illallah? That Allah would give me tawfiq to say la ilaha illallah. al qawl al thabit that word in the last moments of my life, if I'm not saying it throughout my daily life. So there's a delusion there. If you're not doing the good deeds regularly that you want to die upon, there's a delusion there. May Allah protect us from it. That's ghurur. It's pure ghurur. And you know, subhanAllah, you think about teaching about Sayyidina Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the one who died reading the Qur'an, right? Uh, and what did he say? If the hearts were pure, then it would never become, th- it would never quench its thirst of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, I hate that a day passes by that I don't look at a page of a mushaf. Do you think Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu would pick up the Qur'an and look at it quickly and say, okay, I did it? Or would he read it regularly? Did he have a strong regimen, right? Some of the narrations of his fadal say twice a day, mm-hmm. uh, that he finished the entire Quran, bi raka'ah amam al Ka'bah, uh, that he finished it all in one raka'ah in front of the Ka'bah. He loved the Quran, and that's why Allah blesses him, that he's reading the Quran when he dies. Imagine his hand is cut and the blood is coming down. He sees his blood falling on the page of his mushaf. It's delusion to think that Allah will give you an ending doing something that you don't do regularly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Allah will suffice you in regards to them. As blood spilled right on that verse. So it's delusion to think that, that, that you will die doing something you don't do on a regular basis in your life. So what do you want the last day of your life to look like? Let that be tomorrow. Allah Akbar. What does tomorrow look like for you? If tomorrow comes, what does today look like for you? So, you know, La ilaha illallah, when the Prophet Sallallahu says, keep your mouth moist. With la ilaha illallah and all of the forms of la ilaha illallah, tahleed, la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la, lahu al-mulk wa lahu al-hamd wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir, la ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al-zalimeen, la ilaha illallah al-aliyu al-azim, la ilaha illallah al To keep your tongue moist with dhikr. And then what's going to happen when, bi-idhni Allahi ta'ala, death comes to you. Saying la ilaha illallah in your last moments is, is, is really heavy. It's really heavy. You know, the way my father-in-law would describe it, uh, you know, he, he always talked about it in regards to weights because uh, he's a sheikh, mashallah, and a bodybuilder. <laughs> so he always he a strong, strong, you know, man, and he would always talk about it in regards to weights. And he would, he'd actually use the example of the weights. Like, he's like, you know, if you tell someone to pick up 
300 pounds and they don't work out, what's going to happen to them? You're going to collapse, throw your back out. You're not going to be able to do that. But if that person's so regular with the physical discipline, then it becomes, you know, second nature. So make dhikr second nature, make good your norm. I was thinking about the Quran, subhanAllah. And and wallah, and I'm gonna I'm challenging myself first and foremost. And by the way, to the mashayikh and to the tulab ilm, uh, if the only time we read the Quran is when we're doing it as part of class time, and the only time we read books of Taskiya or read into the the aqwal as salaf as salih is to prepare something to teach, that's a problem. So reading the Quran for dhikr as a form of ibadah, even the talib al is very important. Reading your awrah in the form of worship, not just teaching them to your students or not just reciting them to your teacher. Reading them as a form of worship. Uh, and I was just thinking about this. And, and this is a challenge and this is something that I want all of us to think about. How many of us can relate to the experience of getting lost in comments on social media? <laughs> like you started reading comments and then you kept, okay, comment, comment, comment. I know I can relate to that experience. I've gotten lost in comments. I'm not, I'm not going to act like an angel here. Okay. <laughs> I, I've spent, I, there are times you spend a long time, right? Oh, this person said this. Let me go read all the replies. And oh, I wonder what this person said. And let me go get, and you get lost in something. Or you get, how many, how many of us can relate to getting lost in watching videos? You started watching a, a YouTube video and then you got lost and you went down the hole, right? The algorithm catches you. You go next, 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 next. When's the last time you've been lost in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Lost in the sense that you were reading and you had a wit for yourself and you said, this is just too beautiful. I'm too connected. Let me keep reading. Let me keep going. When's the last time I got lost in the book of Allah? I'm not, I'm not putting this on the audience. Like this is some sort of uh, thing that I've got down. It's a challenge. It's something to think about. I was thinking about the statement of Uthman with the Allah ta'ala anhu. When's the last time you got lost in the book of Allah or lost in your du'a? You lost track of time because you were so into your du'a. You lost track of time because you were so into your dhikr. Those are the stations that we should strive for um, to where the regular, the, we, have, we have a regular regimen of good deeds that we wish to meet Allah Azza wa Jal upon and the tawfiq of Allah that, that he loves us and that he wants good for us would be that Allah Azza wa Jal gives us tawfiq in those last moments, extends you a little, a few hours to go do that last thing, guides you to that last good deed, guides you to be on the way to do something beautiful, you know, guides you to live another day for your sliyam that you die in fasting. A person was going to, you know, my mother, may Allah have mercy on her, she died on Layla to Juma, And I know that meant a lot to her, the hadith about dying on Juma, right? Like, like guides you in a coma even to just survive just till the sunset of Thursday and you're in Layla to Juma and you receive the I, I, I have husn al in Allah that that was a gift to her because we prayed, we prayed janazah on my mother Allah Hamha after Juma. It was that someone dies on Jum'ah, they're forgiven. Yeah, so I mean, they're the, the riwayat, the fala'al of being protected from adab al qabr. May Allah make us amongst them. Allah, I mean, so Allah guides you, gives you a little bit more, guides you, uh, guides a person to be on their way to Hajj, you know, and then to die in Hajj, uh, or, or, or in, the, in, the, in the city of the Prophet. These are all like major things that we would seek, you know. My favorite, um. So I mentioned I gave away like my my favorite two nasheeds uh, or two two nasheeds I, I love listening to Farshi Turab and Hal Turana Hal Taqi by Amina Qutub. Uh, just beautiful nasheed uh, that are you know that, that they'll just kind of play over and over again. Um, uh, there is this documentary about Sheikh Abdul Hamid Kishk Rahimahullah Taala, a great scholar in Masr, passed away I believe in 1996. Um, and he died in sujood on Yom al-Jum'ah. And he used to make dua to Allah, Allahumma ahini imama, wa amitni imama, oh Allah, let me live as an imam, let me die as an imam, wa hishurni bayni adayk wa ana sajidun And let me be resurrected while I'm in a state of sujood. And how did he die? He died in a state of sujood, Yom al-Jum'ah. Um, and if you, you watch, you know, there's just a powerful uh, clip. Uh, there's a documentary on him. Uh, it's the first, if you search in Arabi, Sheikh uh, Abdul Hamid Kish, rahimahullah. And I always just fast forward to the end of that documentary <clears throat> to where they show, like, a person dying in sujood. And 
then they have all these all of his colleagues and students talking about like how you hear his voice in the background and his because he'd say this in khutbas <laughs> it wasn't like this was like someone you know, uh, this is some you know someone uh, transmitted this uh, from the Shaykh rahimullah he would say this in his khutbas you hear it in his cassette tapes Allah, and I asked Allah, Allahumma ahyini imama, wa amitni imama. Like you hear it in his voice and you see the picture of a man, the, the scenes of a man that died in his sujood, uh, who had died in his sujood. It's like, Ya Allah, what a beautiful death. Ya Allah, what a beautiful death. So he had sidq in his niyyah, truthfulness in his intention. So when you make dua in your sujood and you say, Oh Allah, grant me husn al khitam. Oh Allah, grant me husn al khitam. Oh Allah, grant me husn al khitam. You ask Allah for a good ending. You're asking Allah for a good ending and you're doing it in sujood and you have sidq al niyyah, you have a truthfulness in your heart. Right? So make dua for it and then live the way that you want to die. Live the way that you want to die. Um, th there was an article that I wrote uh, that I wrote like a year ago or something. There was a death, death of a sister Somali sister named Hudan Allah. she was a, a sister that was uh, very active mashallah in Canada um, very active and uh, when she died it was just such a beautiful tribute the way that people spoke about her similar to Abdul Rahim you know you look at the um, the way that all of the testimonies line up when you die when you die most people will say good things about you even out of a sense of obligation Right, and that's why you know I always thought about that hadith wajabat wajabat wajabat, where the Prophet ﷺ saw two bodies come through. One body came past, and and the Sahaba uh, said good things about that person. And the Prophet ﷺ said it has become mandatory. Another body passed through, and the, and, and the Sahaba said not so nice things about the person. And the Prophet ﷺ said it became mandatory. So he said for the first one, it became mandatory for that person to enter Jannah by your testimony, and then the second one, it became mandatory to hellfire. Uh, because of the testimony of their abuse. And here's the thing about that. You have to have really hurt people for them to not even forgive you at the time of death. Like to not to, to not even be able to say nice things about you at your time of death. You really have had to be a zalim. You would have had to be a wrongdoer. You would have had to really hurt someone that they said, Alhamdulillah, you're gone. Because al-Muslimu man salim al-Muslimun min lisanihi wa yadi. Man salim al-Nas min lisanihi wa yadi. Fi riwayah. Uh, that's also sahih, that a Muslim is the one who the Muslimin the, or the people feel safe from their tongue and from their hand. And so someone says, Alhamdulillah, that person's dead. Yeah, Allah. Alhamdulillah. Whether it was a tyrant in a grand scale or just a tyrant. And, and you know, I've, by the way, I've, you know, I, I've seen a woman who lost her husband. Can you imagine? And she was happy he was gone. Like, imagine, right? Like, how bad a person would have to be, how abusive, or how much of a lawdom a person would have to be, a wrongdoer a person would have to be, that the people would say, Alhamdulillah, they're gone. Most people, most people, when they die, people will say, Rahimahullah, good person, nice, always, you know, always this, always that, right? But then there's this next category. It's a special category. You know what that category is? That's when everyone is praising Ihsan, remembering a particular quality of Ihsan, of excellence. And that Ihsan, that excellence that they are remembering, uh, there is there's a, there's a consistency across all the testimonies. And then there's a consistency of all the testimonies of the, the people, of the goodness of that person, like with Shaykh Abdul Rahim, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. But then also there was... Uh, there was sincerity on the part of the person who showed the ihsan to everybody. Okay? So uh, there can't be a separation between those two things. So when you have sincerity that meets a good qu good quality or good qualities to where the people all mention the same qualities. I heard there were how many, I don't know how many people were at Janazah, the Janazah of Shaykh Abdul Rahim, but it was a lot of people. There were a lot of people, more than 2,000 people. Over 2,000 people. Allah I mean, I couldn't even see when I turned around. I mean, I, I got, I, I was held up to the graveyard, right? Because of all the par cars in the parking lot, even, right? It was just too many cars, even trying to get to the grave. And I, I looked back and I said, Yeah, Allah, this is COVID. This is COVID era. And look at all these people 
that showed up. And alhamdulillah, we should clarify, it wasn't a super spreader event. You know, that's a miracle from Allah Azza wa Jalla that it wasn't a super spreader event. I came home that day, I said, I definitely got COVID. <laughs> but it was just shuhada, and may Allah protect all of you guys. You get hugged by 2,000 people. Um, alhamdulillah. You know, and if, if, you know, Canada, Canada, the border was closed. If the Canadians came, Oh, man, it would have been another few thousand. And uh, but you oh. came from so far. May Allah reward you. Oh, yeah. Like you said, it was just a t when I saw the when I, I I told my brother a day before I said you guys need to have police and security. My brother's like, no, nah, it's not gonna be that many people coming. It's um, it's COVID. Sheikh Omar Bajan, um, taking care of the Rahman. Sheikh Omar came down. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala sent him literally to take care of the of Sheikh Abdul Rahman. And, and and this is at the graveyard. Um, I think my son is on the left of Mufti Abdul Rahman, and his son is on his right. Mm -hmm. Omar is holding him on the shoulder right there, and Abu Jundi, my beloved friend, um, mm -hmm. he's on right behind him, who's also giving shit. And Mufti Abdul Rahman surrounded by his students all around. And they're, all of them are just crying, and Sheikh Omar is giving him so much comfort. And I, it was so much. It was, it was so much. It was yeah. so much. I mean, Sheikh probably doesn't remember this picture right here, but I remember this one. Um, this is when, um, when he came for the conference for the first time. Um, Abdul Rahim was also in his in his khidma. We assigned him because he's the best khidma in the world. He did, no one does better khidma than him. So we assigned him to be in charge of Sheikh Umar's khidma, and he's right there, as Sheikh Umar mentioned, always on the side, right? Always, always avoiding the camera. Uh, and Mufid Rahman with him and Sheikh Umar with his um, ever bright smile, mashallah. You know me, I'm always in the camera, right? And Abdul Rahim, <laughs> he's always in front of the, he's always trying to hide and he's he's being ignored even in the pictures. You know, majhulun fil ardu wa fil sama. It just, inshallah, you know, the angels welcomed him with with a big celebration, big celebration. Um, um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Um, you're right, Sheikh Omar. You, you know, the just um, and when the people came for the janaza, it's, I don't know, Sheikh. One of the shiuk said, Sheikh Abdullah, there was 5,000 people. I was like, no, there's not 5,000, it was 2,000 max, 3,000. And the duas that people made for him, and the people that you know, till today, people are still making dua for him. I, I you know, Sheikh Omar, I was crying part more mostly because I was jealous, you know. That he had such a great uh, farewell in the sense that I didn't know he was this righteous. I didn't know he, I, a lot of the stories my brothers are telling me, my wife's telling me, and my my sister in laws are telling me, and, they're, and I'm hearing these stories like why why didn't anyone tell us this before? And he was doing all of this and just that story about the locker where I mentioned earlier and I he had a locker with the lock on the combination lock and it had the code. Uh, and he had the codes on the locker. And then his one of his friends said to him, why would you leave a code on the locker? And he said, just in case people are hungry, they have access to my locker. And I said, what type of heart does a person have like this? And then, you know, just always around his, uh, his audios that we are going through. Now we're focusing on word by word. He's telling everyone, oh, I'm serving my mother. Um, I'm too busy for my mother. Um, I'm doing whatever I could do to make my brother happy. And I just like, man, like, I wish we were there just to, you know, hug him a little bit earlier and to tell him thank you so much for everything you've done. You know, as in my case, being the oldest brother and playing the father role for the family, it's been the, the an unbelievable. And I, you know, someone if they ever ask, would you do this for someone else, for someone else's family, or and it's, you know, like you know, I hope I never have to do it again for my brothers. But this is unbelievable, unbelievable, uh, you know, experience just. We were standing there, Sheikh Omar, with my brother, and everyone with my brothers who were standing there praying with us. It's just unbelievable. And I'm telling you, people don't know that, you know, it's COVID, but sometimes when you give comfort to people in these times, it's, it's pain. I, I, you can't describe pain. It's just the emotions can't be described. But inshallah, uh, you know, like Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, we only say, well, please do Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the heart aches and the eyes drip with tears. And we just, we, I told my brothers this earlier, after, like after the funeral, I said, Jannah has become personal. You know, Jannah has become personal. 
Shaykh Omar is Jannah's personal because your mom is there. And of course, you have so many more friends that you're looking forward to seeing. I, I wish I had made Jannah more personal before. I swear to God, I would have earned so much more reward. But uh, Jannah is a personal venture now. And I just wish Allah so I can keep these these eyes open to the truth forever. You know, just in the haq of the, the truth and the, the and the inevitability of akhirah can always remain in front of our eyes so we can be prepared for that day. And I was telling Sheikh Omar before this, I said, Sheikh Omar, you know, the fear is that we got to live that life to get there. <laughs> well, like, I mean, we got to live, you got to live it. We can't just die and go to dinner. We have to live this dunya. We have to fight the nafs. We have to fight the devil, the shaitan. Please our parents, please our friends, serve the community and just to do it sincerely, inshallah. And then Shaykh Omar said, you know, he said, he said one of my favorite hadith, Man Allah Jannah Salatha Marat. Anyone that asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for Jannah three times, Faqalat al Jannah, Allah madhilufi. Oh Allah, this person asked to enter me three times. He brought to grant him the pass to enter Jannah. So Allah is Rahim, Kareem, Ra'uf, Wadud, He loves us. And you know, and to Allah, you know, it's just we ask Allah SWT to remove, uplift the pain of the Muslims around the world. To give my brothers, my family, sabr. And, and bless Sheikh Omar's family. Give brothers and sisters, whoever is listening, can make dua for Sheikh Omar, his family, and reality as family members who are sick. That Allah give them shifa. If everyone here can definitely make dua for Sheikh Omar's family, um, that there's a, we have, he has a very beloved member in his family that is not feeling well. That if we can make dua, Allah gives him shifa and aajil and mustamir and ya rabbal alameen aajil and qareeb and mustamir Allah mashfihi shifa and aajil and ya rabbal alameen asallallah al-azim rabbal arsh al-azim and yashfihi shifa and ya rabbal alameen asallallah al-azim rabbal arsh al-azim and yashfihi asallallah rabbal arsh al-azim and yashfihi rabbal alameen you know you know brothers and sisters I don't know we we watch our our scholars online and uh, we don't see their emotions you know sometimes uh, you, you hear Sheikh Umar uh, every night on, on Yaqeen. The work that Yaqeen is doing is revolutionary. It's transformed millions of people's lives. And the youth, the adults all across the world. Um, uh, I wish I could, I could take Sheikh Umar off because I'm going to praise him, but I needed him to stay on the screen for the moment. Um, the work that Yaqeen is doing is unbelievable work. And you know, and uh, we are servants to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but Sheikh Umar lived in this world to serve humanity, whether it's the people who are incarcerated at the, the camps near New Mexico or Texas somewhere and who have been deprived of their parents in these camps and all people all across the world in New Zealand, going all the way to New Zealand just to give aza to the shuhada and the family members who were brutally killed on a Friday in the masjid to meet their families. It's unbelievable, man. I just, I just, I wish, you know, if one person like Sheikh Omar Inshallah, we ask Allah, give him life, baraka, afia, ifa, bless his wife, bless his children. And, um, you know, I remember being at his house, seeing uh, her, his children. You know, he has an Abdullah, you know, and, and he has these beautiful kids there. May Allah protect them, protect his family. And I can't imagine just the, the sometimes the negativity from the Muslim community and then the negativity from the Islamophobes that come. People are so... You understand that, you know, these imams, these shuyukh out there, they're putting their life on the line, their family at risk, their nights to serve the community. And and, and people think, oh, they have following and they have all this social media uh, following and stuff. Brothers and sisters, I tell you this, I tell you right now, I know Sheikh Omar, I know some of these people, <laughs> that doesn't really matter to them. What matters to them is to get this job done. And and I just, I just wish people can uh, keep on praying for People like um, you know, a doctor who I want to congratulate in front of everyone. May Allah bless you. He became a doctor, finished his PhD, doing all that he's doing. Allah bless you, um, uh, Dr. Sheikh Omar, with all the good that Allah has in his treasures. Your family, uh, Muftah Bilhab, you, may Allah bless you with strength, with courage, with the ability to serve the ummah and give you the reward for the loss of our beloved brother. And uh, inshallah, you know, Allah is kareem. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we will not put a burden upon someone that they can't bear, you know. And um, Omar knows that, you know, he, he lost his beloved mother and he gave a talk um, at mass and at a convention about his beloved mother. It's a beautiful tribute to his mom. People should listen to it. I listened to it before multiple times. 
I mean, a person that loves his mother so much, got the dwells of his mother, his father, and and now he's working by the dwells of his wife for sure. His wife, his wife is making dua for him, and he's moving. The trend is moving, and you know, so we're so blessed, you know. Uh, what we can do for our people like Sheikh Omar, Sheikh Abdul Wahab, and people who are serving around the world, just make dua for them, make dua for the families, keep them in your duas, and you know, try to just support the causes they're involved in. And that's how we get motiva motivation, your prayers, your strength, which is so much is needed. So, say Omar, can you, can you, I know you don't want to talk. And um, um, I, was, I, was, I was waiting for you to stop. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I, almost left, I almost left this webinar and I was just going to text you, you know, I love you, but you're killing me, man. <laughs> Um, I think uh, may, Allah, may Allah protect us, and um, I, I will say that just as you know, at the end of the day, when when we're when we're um, when we're in the grave, the thanat of people doesn't matter. So unless it's true of us, it's not. It doesn't matter. So um, may Allah protect us. You know, and we talk about Jannah, and you said you made it. Per we made it. Per we do make it personal, uh, and we don't stop fearing that we're not worthy. And uh, you got to work to be worthy, and uh, the praise of people does not matter. And 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 I'll say this as well. Um, what 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 a miserable takeaway if a person who has their mother alive uh, sees that story, hears about how Abdul Rahim Rahimullah was picking up medicine for his mother, always serving her every day and at night, and doesn't bother to call their mom. And serve their mom. Uh, what 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 a miserable way to to walk away from a story like that. Uh, we learn from the best of each other, and we seek forgiveness for ourselves and for each other for our shortcomings. We're not prophets. We are not infallible. We have mistakes. We have sins. We need a lot forgiveness for ourselves and for each other. Uh, and so we have to make dua for maghfir. At the end of the day, no matter how good we might think a person is. Only Allah knows that person. Uh, so you have to uh, make sure, you know, again, it's it's two things here. And the way that you generate sincerity is private ibadah, personal ibadah. What's your personal regimen of worship? How many, how many, um, you know, I mean, looking at Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Umar, Uthman, Ali, uh, how many uh, all the great stories we have of them how many great stories does only Allah have how many stories of Uthman Sadaqa does only Allah know that never made it to the to the history books they, but they made it to his book of deeds oh my God. any secret moments of Sadaqa and so what's in our books the books of history the books that you know the news cycle is so so quick now we die, even the world moved on from Kobe Bryant eventually, right? Like, I mean, people, you die, people grieve you. And then the world moves on. And uh, the reality is that that's going to be all of us. The world will move on. And we and we get, we, get so, we get so entrapped in our world. And we get so offended when people, you know, don't choose us or don't appreciate us. We get so engrossed into that. This, and this move, I mean, you go to the graveyard, you take your family, you take your wealth, you take your deeds. Two of them leave you at the graveyard. You guys can't sleep there. We can't go to the graveyard. We can't go to the grave with our loved ones. The only thing that remains is their deeds. The only thing that's going to remain with us is our amal. How many amal saliha? How many good deeds do we have that only Allah knows about? That's that's the, the secret ingredient is the secret good deed. Mm. How many good deeds are going to show up in the grave with a beautiful appearance and on your mizan on the day of judgment? That is only between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because everything that you've been praised for, everything that people mention, there's a potential that your niyyah was compromised, your sincerity was compromised, 
right? Everything. And how many secret good deeds are going to show up in the grave and be like, I am your Qiyam. <laughs> I'm that secret charity you gave because you felt a, a moment of softness in your heart and you just went online and just clicked $100 to some charity in Gaza or wherever it is, Syria or Somalia, just $100. Ya Allah, sadaqa to sir. It's just between me and you, Ya Allah. I was feeling it. I was not a fundraiser. Your secret Siyam. Um, those are things that 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 that's that's the storage you need to have, right? That's the that's the increase you need to have. Those are the amal that cannot be compromised because they've only been seen by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. No Facebook likes, no no, not even your family. Right. Even your family. Read about the salaf, right? They would hide their qiyam even from their spouses. They would they would be they'll be sleeping on the same pillow, Mufti Sab, mm -hmm. and the husband would be crying, and the wife would not even know the. The husband is crying under the love of Allah SWT. He would, you know, some you know, sometime when in our culture, when someone wants to hide something from their wife, they turn their face out of the way and they use their phone, right? And they turn back, yeah, hey, what, what are you saying, honey? The the sort of like you were saying, the pious would turn their heads out of the way and do the dhikr of Allah and cry. And their spouse would not even know they were weeping under the love of Allah SWT. Yeah, so when I read that Allah Ta'ala, his wife would 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 find the pillow wet, his side of the pillow wet. Who, so who, who? shifts? Sufyan Thawri rahimahullah ta'ala. His wife would find the pillow wet from his tears. Uh, look, that's that's all. Look, that, that's that's it. Uh, and, and by the way, that the, the best thing about secret good deeds is that they cannot be compromised. And so you're still, even with your secret good deeds, you're, you're depending on the mercy of Allah, not on the... Because you, you don't want to develop the disease of ujb, mm. where you... You know, riya is to is to be seen, to seek to be seen doing good deeds. Ujb is to see yourself doing good deeds. And then oh. you say, MashaAllah, look at me. You're saying, uh, I'm here praying Qiyam. I bet those other guys aren't praying Qiyam. I gave the secret sabaqah. I bet they, if, if only they knew, what would they say about me? Forget about what they'd say about you. And just like, by the way, you the secret ingredient is the secret good deed, the killer is the secret sin. May Allah protect us. Of course, and, and Allah is so merciful to us that the Prophet ﷺ said that Allah forgives the sins of the believer except for the ones they do jahr of, they publicize. What they boast of, right? The, the sitr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one of the salaf said, Allahumma sturna bi sitrika al jameel waj'al tahta sitrata ma tarda bi anna. Oh Allah, cover us with your beautiful cover and then place under the cover what is pleasing to you, O oh Allah. So don't. So it's not just the, not publicizing your sin, but but also what are the secret sins? You know, إذا ما قال لي ربي أما استحييت تعصيني وتخفذ ذنب عن خلقي وبالعصياني تأتيني. If my Lord says to me, "Weren't you ashamed of disobeying me?" You hide the sin from other people and then you bring it to me proudly when you're alone. إذا خلوا بمحارم الله when they're alone with the with, with the prohibitions of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. These devices are poison. They're poison, right? There's so many ways for us to sin. So many ways for us to sin. So many, so many ways for us to sin. So fill up your jar of secret good deeds. Delete your secret sins. Delete your sins as much as you can. Taqullah mustata'atum. You know, we fear Allah as much as we can. Um, but we got to push ourselves, right? So the grave is a very lonely place. But nothing, you know, when you're in when you're in the grave. That's it. Like no one else's perception matters at that point. No one else's perception matters at that point. So store, have a healthy storage of secret good deeds and be careful of being easy with secret sins. You know, like it's the, the, don't publicize your sins mm. and you're going to fall. Um, you're going to fall. Right. And that's, that's natural. Seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But at the same time, like, don't become easy with it. Like, oh, okay, now it's, it's just, it's, you know, I can get away with this now. Mm. <laughs> I can get away with this now, right? I can send this message. I can look at this. I can do this. I can do that. I can get away with it now. Um, so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for sincerity. We ask Allah for protection from hypocrisy. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us and to forgive al-mu'minina wal-mu'minat wal-muslimina wal-muslimat al-ahya'i minhum wal-amwat.
Forgive the living and the deceased believers, past, present, future. And, uh, you know, and that's something that, that we owe, right? Keep on making dua for people. Make dua for, for, the, for their forgiveness. So we, how beautiful you're seeking forgiveness for generations of Muslims that have yet to come and generations that have passed before. So keep making dua for forgiveness for yourself and for your brothers and sisters. And we ask Allah for forgiveness for uh, Shaykh Abdul Rahim, Rahim Allah Ta'ala. نَحْسَبُهُ بِذْنِ مَعْنِ تَعَلَى مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ We see him, and then we have husn al in Allah that he be counted amongst the righteous and amongst the shuhada. But we never stop asking Allah, Ya Allah, forgive him and elevate him. And Ya Allah, forgive us and elevate us. I mean, um, um, Shaykh Umar, you always your, your wise words, your soft spoken style of, of convincing and giving us advice. Again, man, you already messed it up once. <laughs> <laughs> You're, Jazakallah khair, Shaykh Umar. I love you guys so much. Uh, Allah knows. I love you guys so much. And I hope the community there is showing you guys some love. Thank you. You love me that much. And I come to Dallas after this COVID. You going to give me some steak? Halal, halal barbecue it is, man. <laughs> no, we, 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 we have it here in this dunya. We're definitely going to have some in Jannah, inshallah. But Sheikh Abdul Rahim, inshallah. You want to just ask, you know, people normally when we come in, in the normal traditional way that we used to do these Friday night lives is we would always, also always ask the Shayyukh about some not like personal questions, but close enough, such as like, you know, what's what's your um, your favorite food? Um, off, man. <laughs> All right, ask. Bismillah. I mean, Sheikh Abdullah can ask. We can go ahead. Well, not... Hab can't even ask a question right now. He's such a he's not in the state of mind. But um, um, Sheikh Omar, I know his favorite football team, and uh, and because when I was at his house, there's two things I could find in his office everywhere. Uh, it was uh, the New Orleans Saints. You know, and, uh, that's why he became a saint himself. Mashallah. You know, and and the other thing he had around him. Was Muhammad just cross some 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 flimsy aqidah lines there, man? You know what I'm saying? It was a different type of thing. I, I, I don't know how your viewers you know, interpretate my lines, but my viewers don't have any problem with it. <laughs> yeah, um, but um, yeah, he he's a big fan of the New Orleans Saints because he was an imam there. And are you originally from New Orleans? Yeah, yeah. I was born in New Orleans, I'm born and raised in New Orleans, obviously. So yeah, and so I know that he's a big fan of that. And also Muhammad Ali, Rahmatullah Ali, these, these, and then of course we know his beautiful class on Malcolm X. These, these are the things that I know Sheikh loves a lot about him. Um, other than that, Sheikh, can you tell us? Um, I don't know if you're, I don't know how public you are about this, but can you tell us your kids' names at least and how they're doing? Yeah, uh, so I'll actually share because um, uh, my oldest is May. May, that's your mom's name. That's my mom's name, Allah Yarhamha. So yeah. some people think I just named her, you know, it's one of those names you want to just give to people so they can uh, make it easy in society. No, May is her name, not because it's, it's a beautiful name. Beautiful easy name. name. It's, it's her name because I named her after my mother, Rahmatullah Alayha. And I, I hope that, and, and mashallah, mashallah, she shares a lot of her qualities. Oh my God. So May is, May, May is uh, giving us a lot of comfort because... Uh, Please make dua that she's from the Salihat. I mean, I mean, she has a lot of her qualities. Tabarakallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make her the coolness of your eyes. Um, when she meets your mother in Jannah, your mom's so proud of her. I mean, I mean, I mean. Um, and she never met her actually in person. Oh, no. She passed away uh, before she was born. My second is Abdullah, Abdullah ibn Umar. You can't go wrong with that. Yeah, yeah. So my 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 hope is that he loves the sunnah the way Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu I love the sunnah. Uh, so Abdullah mm -hmm. ibn Umar was, uh, and then our third one. So I'll, I'll share this with you guys. Um, I told my wife when we got married, I was like, "Look, please, the first two names, I gotta have them." You know, so I said me, I, and and you know, a lot of people want, a lot of people want their uh, their first to be a boy. I was like, "Yeah, Allah, I want a girl." I would have been happy with 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 anything that Allah gives. I was like, "Yeah, Allah, a girl," because I wanted so bad to have a girl I could name after my mom, right? And Alhamdulillah, Allah gave me that. Alhamdulillah, I had the boy, right? And so I was like, "Please, I want a name. I want so badly to have a girl named after my mom. And if Allah blesses us with a boy, I want to have Abdullah ibn Umar, so people can say Allahu anhu, right?" Just yeah. yes, Allah, Allah actually, or he he would always he he make that du'a and then he'd laugh. Uh, he was actually here when when Abdullah was born. 
uh, in Dallas. And so he, he would, you know, Abdullah ibn Umar, radi Allahu anhuma, radi Allahu anhu wa an Abi. So he'd always say it. So it was beautiful. Umar, Sheikh Umar, when I saw Abdullah ibn Umar, I tell you this much, he could beat up the devil. He, he's a strong so, kid. He has energy. But there are a lot of holes in the walls because of him, too. You got to call, call him down. There be a lot of holes in the... Uh, oh. <laughs> strong kids, man. He's a strong kid. Mashallah. So anyway, so the third one, right? So we had our third one, alhamdulillah. And I was like, hey, what do you think about Hafsa? You know, it'd be so cool. Omar has, you know, Abdullah and Hafsa. And it was like, we had like this whole thing. So my wife, my wife's number one was uh, Hidayah, Hafsa. So we were kind of like, then we, we both like had our, our list of three names. So number two on both of our lists was Khadija. Ooh. All right, so I have a special uh, love for Khadija, radiallahu ta'ala anha. And truly, when you visit her in al Mu'alla in Mecca, it's like visiting your mom. Like the, the, the feeling of visiting your mom, right? She's first of Ummahat al Mu'mineen. So Allah blessed us with the baby girl, and we, 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 we came to compromise and we love uh, Khadija. And you, you're giving so many talks on Khadija, and they're so beautiful. Allah barakikum. Yeah, I mean, subhanAllah, how can you. How how can you love? How can you not love her? <laughs> Revelation. So I mean, how can you not love her? Right? The selflessness of Khadija, radiAllahu anha, the love of Khadija for our Prophet Sallallahu You know, you know when you love someone who 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 took care of someone that's beloved to you, right? I mean, the comfort she brought to the Prophet Sallallahu mm -hmm. What an amazing, amazing human being, an amazing woman, and truly, like a lot of people don't go to Mu'alla uh, to the graveyard in Mecca. It's not too far from the Haram. Uh, where Khadija radiallahu anha has buried. Um, and just to say, Assalamu alaikum ya ummi. Uh, just go say salam to her and to, uh, even if you're gazing at her grave from the street, um, if you can't go in, special. It's it's a very special. Umar, what was that? The envious the envious moment of my life is when Khadija wrapped the Prophet after Wahi. What, oh, what a person she was, man. She just, she wrapped the Prophet <laughs> And so when you think about, you know, this, I think to bring it all back in terms of the topic, Allah did not gift her that for no reason, right? People, people live to, people gain these special gifts from something that is beloved to them. And I hear Khadija crying in the background, by the way. Like, is that right? Khadija? That's Khadija. She's crying. Yeah. They're talking about how strong Abdullah is. Abdullah always uh, knocks her over or something like that. <laughs> She's that feisty one and a half year old running around then. Abdullah will pick her up and throw her to the side or something like that. So it's been a problem we've had. So. <laughs> may Allah reward you. Right? May Allah protect. You know, my brother, Abdul Aziz, his wife is expecting in a few, few days, a few weeks. So he, he was all set to name his son Umar. <sighs> all set if he has this. He doesn't know his, the, child, the child's gender, whether it's... If he hears me say this on live, he's going to get mad. So just pretend like you never heard it. You know, so he's exposed his his wife, um, and he's like they don't know the gender for some reason. They're, they don't want to find out. Um, so he said, if I have a son, I'm gonna name him Umar. So he sounds Umar bin Abdul Aziz, right? The whole Umar bin Abdul Aziz goes there. And similar situation like yours, you know, your daughter comes to this world after your mother passed away, rahmatullah and you named him, you named your daughter after your beloved mother, rahimahullah. Sheikh Abdul Aziz is like. If I have a son, it's not in the, in the debate list. It's Abdul Rahim, Rahimahullah. You know, um, so I and so we ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. You know, Sheikh Omar, like, can you say one thing about your mom that can be a lesson for us? I don't. We we've gone past time. Just one thing that you remember the most about your mom. Quran, Quran. Uh, my mom, Rahimahullah, did fourteen khatams of the Quran her last Ramadan. So she would do half the Quran a day. Quran. I, I remember, you know, when you think about your, your uh, I, I remember my mom more in hijab, like in her salah clothes than I do without her salah clothes because she was always wearing her salah clothes. When we were kids, we'd be frustrated because like she goes to pray the and it's like, uh, you know, like her salat al duha was like, like 45 minutes. <laughs> like that. So I remember my brother, you know, we were kids. My brother was like, that's not even a real salah. You know, it's not, it's not, it's not one of the five prayers. What's this salah you're doing at like, you know, 11 a.m., like 45 minutes? Come on, like, what's going on here? Uh, so her ibadah 
was special. Um, she generated that ibadah from how she dealt with trial. Her religiosity came out of the way that Allah tested her. She was tested so severely. She lived an extremely difficult life with health. Wow. Cancer, stroke after stroke, MS. I mean, you name it. Like there was, her health issues were just... And she was a fully healthy woman, subhanAllah. And then, you know, around uh, her late 20s, early 30s, everything just started going downhill. And so for the rest of her life was just test after test after test with her health. And the way that she allowed the test to drive her to ibadah was so beautiful. She found peace in that. You can kind of find like comfort. Yeah. In fact, she, so my mother had a reputation for, um, you know, actually for smiling. SubhanAllah, my mother, Rahim Allah, was always, always, always smiling. Always smiling. Always smiling. Shit, shit. I gotta, you definitely inherited that, Sheikh. Like, not, like not like hers. Not like hers. And um, she was, you know, she used to, she used to go and like all these stories about how she would uh, go and like take care of people in the corner and stuff like that. You know, like she'd always make it a point to try to like make people feel welcome in the masjid and stuff like that. So she had a very kind, welcoming spirit. And one of the things about her was that one of her strokes took her, made her partially deaf. And um, so she couldn't hear unless you were like really, really close to her. And you had to repeat yourself loudly a few times for her to hear. This was for the last few years of her life, several years of her life, actually, probably the last decade of her life was that, right? So partially deaf. So she'd sit in the gathering and she would smile and she'd do her dhikr and her tasbih and she wouldn't hear like anything really happening in the gathering. So she's going to these women's gatherings and to these gatherings in different places. And, you know, she just sit there and smile, say salam to people. And she couldn't really hear what was being said. And she would actually say, she would say, Alhamdulillah, Allah spared me from the backbiting and the gossip. Because like, you know, uh, you know, a story of parents of Imam Hanif, rahimullah, right? The, the mother about being deaf to what, what is displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and blind to what's displeasing to Allah. She doesn't use her ears for, for, for listening to riba, listening to those things. And she would just say, Alhamdulillah for... I can't hear what they're saying. And she used to tell me, subhanAllah, she used to say, she said, you know, when people backbite, uh, you can see the darkness in their faces. Like you see, you see a smirk, you see it, you see a nastiness. You know, when we look, if we, if we really paid attention to ourselves when we're doing sins, you know, we talk about the narrations of the salaf about the smell of, of uh, sins, you know, and like if, if uh, there's so many of those narrations, right, about the scent of sin. And subhanAllah, like if you actually look at a person, if we look at ourselves, forget about other people. If we were to think about how we look when we're about to say something qabih, <laughs> you know, and tear into our brothers and sisters and things of that sort. Like, I think there is a darkness that overcomes us. But when you say something good, then there's a goodness that overcomes you. Those are how he would say, like, I could be sitting in a gathering and I could tell when it went to a certain level, like when people started talking about someone else, because you see it in the faces of the people. Wow. And she would say, Alhamdulillah, Allah spared me. So she'd just be sitting in a gathering, making dhikr, smile, hug everyone, say salam to people. But she wouldn't, she couldn't hear unless someone was projecting really loud. And uh, she also had a hard time being understood. So my mom would have to repeat herself a few times, especially if you didn't know her. And that could be frustrating. Um, but subhanAllah, like her Quran, and, and you know, this is people with disabilities, right? Like if you see someone who has autism, but the way they stare at the at the Kaaba, it's, it's a beautiful sight. It's a beautiful sight. And you're like, what is, maybe that person, severe autism, can't express what they're feeling. But there is something, you can just see the transformation. You see something happening to them in their face, in the Umrah or Hajj or whatever it is. Uh, you know, my mom, Allah, because of her speech uh, issues due to her strokes, her tajweed, her Quran might be incomprehensible to someone that doesn't know her, right? Is listening to her. You don't know what surah she's reading. But I'm like, Allah knows. See her go through the pages of her mushaf. And you know, a, a beat up mushaf. You know, a, a, a mushaf that's really, really, the pages have been turned so much. Those are the mushafs that you want to have, right? That's the mushaf that you want to see on the day of judgment. A mushaf where the pages are all over the place. It's like this big because of how many times the pages have been turned and how crumbled they got. So that's her Quran, Quran, Quran. Lots of a love for the Quran and Ibtila drove her to the Quran. So let's let our Ibtila drive us to the Quran. And I think it's beautiful, by the way, that the scholarship and uh, 
in, in Abdul Rahim's name, subhanAllah. He doesn't leave behind a widow or children. He leaves behind the mushaf that he's not going to be able to read anymore in this life. He leaves behind the Quran and the students he would teach the Quran. So how beautiful that he's honored with Sadaqa Jariyah in the Quran. I mean, I mean, I want to thank um, Sheikh Omar so much. I want to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to lighten your mom's grave with new with barakah, and, you know, elevate her status in everything that you do, your your siblings do, your children do. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make that sadqa jariya for her. Give your father barakah and health in his life and strength. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to take work from you and your family for many more decades with afiyah, inshallah. Um, we are so grateful to you, Sheikh, that you joined us tonight. And I said this earlier, we were so grateful to you for visiting us for our brother's funeral. Um, you've always been there for us personally, for me, Mufti Rahman, my brothers, uh, for Miftah, uh, for our family, for Flint, where my community is. We're so grateful for everything that you do, Sheikh. May Allah bless you. May Allah preserve you. And if everyone here on the chat can say Jazakumullah to Sheikh Omar. Um, I apologize uh, for making it emotional, Sheikh, but it's just, I, I didn't plan it, honestly. I apologize. But um, Sheikh, we'll have a better session one day where we can, we can make some lighthearted jokes. But honestly, this is what I needed, honestly. You gave me therapy. You gave me comfort. You gave all of us comfort. You gave my brothers comfort. You gave all the listeners comfort. It was therapeutic. And may Allah give us the sincerity that you were talking about that make everything that we're doing khalisan li wajhin la ya rabbal alameen. Jazakumullah khair. Thank you so much, Sheikh Omar. I, I will see you again soon. Please keep us in your du'as. We miss you so much. Assalamu alaikum. Um, brothers, brothers and sisters, I just want to, uh, before we conclude, I, I wanted to uh, remind everyone, inshallah, that there is still a launch that is going on for Mufti uh, Sheikh Abdul Rahim Rahmatullah Ali. Uh, we will share a link here um, that's going to be on uh, the chat. If you want to support the Hufaf Fund, it's going to go in his legacy. Please go ahead and, uh, and join us and be part of the, the, the Sadqa Jariya for him. Um, also, I wanted to just mention that, inshallah, in end of December, um, I will be teaching a Sira intensive. So every single December I teach for the past three, four years, I've had the honor to not teach, more like study and go over the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Sira. And it's been uh, mainly for the Midwest. People from Pennsylvania and New York have also joined and from uh, Wisconsin and uh, Missouri and Illinois and Indiana and all across states nearby. We've had people come from Vancouver and other parts of uh, Canada. Um, so we're going to have the Sira Intensive. It's seven days long. And uh, the link is also, the website link is also going to be shared here. And we want all of you brothers and sisters to be part of it. I was speaking to this, uh, I was speaking to Sheikh Abdul Rahim before he passed away. He said, we were like, how are we going to have the Sira Intensive? And I said, my goal this year is to get 3,000 people. And then Mufti Abdul Hab and look, look, smiled at me. He said 3,000 people online. We used to get 300 people in person. Last year we got 300 people in person, six days, dedicated their time, six, seven hours a day uh, to say the seerah. Uh, this year we will have in person an auditorium that's capacity for 1,600 people, but we have minimum uh, uh, limited spots, up to 150 to 200 people will join in person the first 150 to register for in-person. We'll get in-person access with social distancing, inshallah. And the rest, it's online. We have uh, we have our own curriculum. We have uh, a student um, a study book. We have our quizzes. It's really interactive. Studying the entire seat of the Prophet in your winter break. Many of us doing COVID might not be traveling this December. Uh, why not jo join us for the Sira Intensive uh, so it's going to be online this year. And this is the first time we're doing it online. I'm not saying this will be the last time, but because of COVID, we're, uh, we're are in a situation that we have to provide that class online. You will register for it. You'll have your family, your, your children uh, can join. And learning the seed of the Prophet Sallallahu we talked about the Prophet so much today. Um, and we, uh, we heard the beautiful nasheed of the Prophet Sallallahu So I humbly request if you brothers and sisters can join us if you want to fly into Michigan or live in Michigan and you want to join us in person. We have limited spots. Uh, registration is on. The website is uh, up. Uh, the link will be shared on the on the chat. And if inshallah, if you want to join us online, you can join us online. There is a link. It's called miftahsira.org. 
please go on to miftasira.org and uh, join uh, the Sira Intensive. And uh, you're going to love it. Anyone that has enjoyed, and if you can join us here, inshallah, if Qalam is providing one in Dallas, Sheikh Abdul Nasser, join his. And he does a better job. That's the fact. Sheikh Abdul Nasser Jangda, who teaches Sira and he's a senior in teaching Sira for so many years in Dallas. I love his Sira. I love the way he teaches. So if you're from the Texas area and you have access to in person, uh, with Sheikh Abdul Nasser, I love him so much. You can join him there. And um, if you want to come by and, and, and join me, you get some humor. Sheikh Abdul Nasser has humor too. He's he's all round, mashallah, Sheikh Abdul Nasser. What a talented person he is. May Allah bless him, preserve him. So you can go to Sheikh Abdul Nasser. May Allah protect him. And you can come here. You have two beautiful programs in, in America that provide the Sira Intensive. And we have ours here in Michigan. So please join us also uh, this uh, winter. Uh, it's December 20th to December 26th. December 20th to December 26th. Please, please join. Um, and again, like I said, it's an opportunity. You can join online or you can join in person. May Allah bless you all. May Allah protect you. May Allah preserve you. And thank you for your du'as. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.